Okay, so the first clip here is only because I accidentally started the story of TCG during a live stream. And then the second clip is when I accidentally went live in order to do the rest of the TCG uh, introduction, but I meant to record. So basically, yeah, you're go so the first clip will show on the live sub count and chat that, that was going on when I was live streaming the first day of 3.3. And then the second one is basically uh, when I accidentally hit our live on OBS after that live stream. So I hope you enjoy. I'm not going to, uh, at, at the end I said, I'm going to split this up and I'm not thinking, no, no, I don't care to. So I could just have this all in one post and then, you know, be able to do more TCG content during the streams. So, th so I'll let you guys get right into it. So, Sucrose, the package you mentioned that you received before, it's not dangerous, is it? You need to be careful when you're opening packages. I once had a friend mail me some research materials and all the bouncing around in transit caused a reaction. Once I opened it, oh, it let out a stench that could wake the dead. If your package contains anything like that, then maybe you should check with Albedo first and see what he thinks. No, this package didn't contain any hazardous materials. Uh, we're just talking about a strange package that Sucrose received recently. A strange package? Yes. I believe it's from a Sumero scholar who came here to study in Mondstadt. It's most likely a thank you gift for collaborating on some research together. Huh? A package from an academia scholar? Well, oh, it is... There could be anything inside. Well, it is ranked at... Uh, well, it is a thank you gift. There wasn't anything dangerous inside. Just a bunch of strange cards. I think I've seen Timaeus with some similar looking cards before. So I came to ask him about what they might be. Uh, you've, you've seen me with some cards? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe those were the testing cards used for distinguishing reagents. No, they didn't look like test cards. Here, have a look. Sucrose? Ooh. Ooh, taking a screenshot of that. Sucrose. Oh, you meant these? Huh. Sucrose, have you really never seen these before? No, never. Recently, I've been spending all my time up in the mountains working on cultivating pentatonic sweet flowers. Why? Is this an area of research that has started trending in the alchemical community during my absence? <laughs> You could definitely say that it's trending, but not as an area of research. It's a card game that's been getting really popular these days. It's called Genius Invocation TCG. Genius Invocation TCG! So this is the game we've on uh, hearing about. Yeah! We've been hearing about this game all over the place, but this is the first time we've ever actually seen any of the cards. We didn't know it had made it all the way to Mondstadt. Must be pretty popular, huh? That's right. The game's been catching on lately. The Yae Publishing House in Inazuma has even published a series of light novels based on the game. The story is really good. Ooh. It starts with a young guy in Sumeru who finds an ancient casket of tomes in the attic. He opens it and discovers that the soul of an ancient TCG player called the Crocodile King has been captured inside. It turns out that the Crocodile King was King Deshret's viceroy who battled an opponent named the Ibis King. During the match, the Crocodile King fell prey to his opponent's scheme and was sealed away in the casket of tomes. After being unexpectedly released by the kid, the Crocodile King possesses him and helps him to gradually climb the ranks and become a legendary TCG player. Uh, Timaeus. Huh? What's wrong, Sucrose? Uh, oh, if you're interested in how the story plays out, I can lend you the novels. No. 
I was just thinking about that time you requested an extension on your progress report deadline, citing yeah. personal reasons for the delay. <laughs> well, uh, I did go through a phase recently where I wasn't putting enough focus on my work, but it's under control now. I've committed to not even touch Genius Invocation TCG until I've made enough progress in my research. Really? <sighs> well, that's unfortunate. Oh? Why is that? Yeah. Well, since it's a gift from a researcher I've collaborated with, I thought that I should at least try to learn the rules. That way, I could say that I at least tried to appreciate his gift. Ha! <laughs> If you want to play it, then just play it. Let me just say it. Okay, fine. I'm not serious and would like to give it a try. Ha. <laughs> Alright, you then, Paimon. It seems like we can't learn how to play it anytime soon, because Kameas has given up for a while. <laughs> well, research is my priority, you know. But if you'd like to learn the rules of Genius Invocation TCG, then I'd actually suggest you go to the Cat's Tale. The cast tail. Yep, that's the place. It's where everyone in the community goes to play when they have time. They gather there, trade cards, and they're very welcoming to new players. Trying to learn the rules can be intimidating at first, but it's a lot of fun once you get the hang of it. Understood. Traveler, Paimon, let's go to the cat's tail and try asking around. All right, you then. To be honest. Hearing Timaeus talking about the game has also piqued my curiosity. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get going! Alrighty then, let's go. And I will record the rest of that. Hey, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Elemental Nation. Back for another Get Your Back Adventure. Oh, uh, this is the first day of, of the TCG event. The invocation TCG. The thing, the um, the clip I just showed a bit ago was on because I didn't know if it was gonna pull me into the quest when I was just trying to go to Catherine. So that seems from my live stream from earlier. What's this? Ga Casket of Tones gadget. Ooh. Bigger player badge. Ooh. Match uh, invitation letter. Nice. Legend, okay. Let's go let's go ahead and do this. Alright, let's do this. And throw little ketones. Oh my gosh, I love the reflection on the door. I see that they did a bit more to the entrance of this place. What's up? I don't dine kitten. Hello, Sucrose. Welcome to the cat's tail. What's up, Margaret? <laughs> it's the Traveler and Paimon. What a What's nice up? surprise. Hell oh, yeah. And Sucrose the Alchemist. It's been a while, hasn't it? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid I've already told you before. Fur from the cat's tail staff is not for sale. No matter how much mora you offer. Uh, it's not... I'm kind of surprised Sucrose would ask, but no, no. That's not the place she was <laughs> going to ask for. Margaret. We're not here for that research project I told you about last time. That's a sucralus. Why can't you just get the fur when they shed? Uh, what, what's research, what research project? Fur from the cat's tail? Uh, sucralus, what kind of experiment were you trying to do with the cat's tail? Uh, oh, I just wanted to test out some hypotheses, and I needed some materials. But, uh, we can talk about that later. Actually, Fine. Margaret, we're here to learn more about Genius Invocation TCG. Just for you, uh, my animal fox. Ah, Genius Invocation TCG. We were just talking about that game. Really? You see, more and more people have been gathering at the cat's tail to play. So I thought, why not have a dedicated staff to serve the new customers? Really? Speaking of which, I believe you've already met. Hmm? Met who? Yeah. You know, Prince. This is the cat's tale after all. So I thought having a cat take care of our new customers would be quite a nice touch. Huh? Oh. Ah, 
Allow me to interpret. <clears throat> Prince says that the word customer is much too loose of a term, and we should instead refer to anyone who loves dueling with cards as TCG players. Hmm, <laughs> my mistake. So it seems I haven't introduced you yet. This is Prince and Shuyin. They will be in charge of taking care of our TCG players. Ah, uh, that guy is bullshitting you. Or he's somehow a cow whisperer. Uh, I'm afraid I must correct you there, ma'am. Only Prince, the strongest and most formidable TCG player of all, is capable of providing valuable guidance to our new players. The average player what? is incapable of grasping the subtlety and sheer genius behind Prince's every play, and he has no choice but to rely on me to communicate with everyone. I am merely Prince's lowly assistant. He has Diona. Wow! Another guy who can understand animals! How can you use such a crude word as animal to describe the one and only Prince? He is special and the only one of his kind. Such a remark is an insult to Prince. The fuck you mean? Oh, what's that? Shu Yen. In the eyes of the common folk, I look no different than any other ordinary cat. It's a natural True. mistake to make, and you shouldn't overreact. Ah, understood. I do apologize. Hmm. It seems he really is capable of communicating with the cat. Could this be the result of some modification to the language center of his brain? Seriously. Can you not hear it? Like, meow. you're a demi human sucrose. Can, can you not understand the cat? Amazing. Yes, it was the sacred duels of genius invocation, TCG, that formed and cemented our bonds of mutual understanding. It's my firm belief that by simply playing the game, players can develop a deeper level of understanding between one another. Okay, I have no pause button. What do you need, though? Yeah, you can pause in editing. And you just cut to the next part of editing. Yeah, I know. What is it, though? What do you want for din? Burgers. Th then you make it. I know. So, playing Genius Invocation oh, yeah, TCG oh, fosters oh, some sort of a telepathic link between players? Fries, no, I'm pretty sure that's not how it is. Same. Uh -huh. Anyway, if you'd like to know anything about Genius Invocation TCG, then please ask Shuyin. Uh, who will ask Prince? Though I'd love to explain more myself, it's time for my we daily walk. Fries. I'll let Prince play a game with you and walk you through all the rules. Just as a seasoned warrior can foresee the path of his opponent's sword, so too can I, as a TCG master, predict my opponent's so every play. It would be improper to pit a newcomer to the art of the card against one such as myself. And I must therefore politely decline. What? <clears throat> That's what Prince said. Oh, okay. Prince doesn't want to play with us, huh? Here, have these laminated ba uh, bacon potato things we'll for dinner. Like you instead. For everyone. I'm pretty know. sure that's for dad. No, he's. I'm pretty sure he's okay for sharing this. You're gonna have to ask dad. I'm asking him shit. I'm sorry. But from the day I met the mighty card master prince, I swore an oath that I'm my hands would live solely to hold the cards and not to play them. Huh? I will never play another match of my own again. Right. Prince's paws probably can't hold the cards. If prince is unwilling to play, then I guess we should look for an alternative. Hmm. Why can't you just play this? matches of your own? Diana! It's just that Prince just has to ask you to play as him while yeah, he tells blah, you what blah, to do. Blah. What is it? I'm pretty busy over here, you know. Huh. What's up, Diona? Why is it that every player that sets foot in here to play Genius Opa. Invocation Shush, TCG just has this? to have a drink? Ugh. Don't they have any clue that the key to playing a game is the ability to think straight? Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> games and drinks don't mix. True. Don't they get that? What can I say? As the tavern owner, I can't help but feel happy to hear this. Anyway, I see you've been working hard, so I thought you could use a break. So, why not come over here and teach these customers the rules of genius invocation? Hiya, let's go, Diona. <laughs> yeah, what kind of break is that? 
I'd rather not. Hm. Oh, why are we letting all these loafers come in here to play Genius Invocation TCG anyway? All it does is encourage more people to come to the bar for a drink. Uh, you know, if drinks are sure there? up like this, pretty soon Mondstadt's alcohol industry is going to reach new heights. <sighs> Looks like my first step in destroying Mondstadt's alcohol industry should be stamping out the spread of Genius Invocation TCG. No, you just had to make sure people had to pay in order to uh, play You said it yourself, TCG. a clear mind is necessary to win. Soon, their thirst for victory will overcome their thirst for alcohol. Prince speaks the truth, Diana. True. Not only is the spread of genius invocation TCG no obstacle to your goal of destroying Mondstadt's alcohol industry, it could even support you in this endeavor. Could, could it really? Yes. Sure, why not? That's an easy thing right, straight in order to play Our a card game. customers are waiting to learn. Shuyin, let's put you on drink mixing duty for now. But Shu Yen is destined for a far greater purpose. Shu Yen, drink mixing now. I'm pretty sure oh. that you were just okay. making that part up, Shu Yen. Ooh, all right. We'll need some space to learn. <laughs> Let's go to that empty table over there. I can, I can maybe agree if he um were to make, you know, saying some of that was actually what uh, Prince was saying. But I can't say everything on uh, what he said was actually coming from Prince. <laughs> okay, let's go through the rules. First Hell yeah. things first. You'll be needing your deck, so place that on the table. Deck? Uh, deck? Uh, yes. I wasn't you given one. Built a deck. You know, a set of cards that meets the bare minimum requirement to play the game. Uh, what's with the blank stairs? Come on. Don't uh. tell me you came to learn Genius Invocation TCG without bringing any cards. That's what we do have some cards. Don't you uh, have any practice deck uh, we could try? Yeah, we need a practice deck. Can't you just let us use one? Psh, there's no such thing. What? Okay, let me think. Huh. Huh. To learn the game, you'll need at least two character cards to switch between. Oh, oh, that reminds me. A few days ago when I was closing up for the night, I noticed a customer had left a couple of character cards on the bar counter. <laughs> Maybe you could use those for now. So I'm technically stealing Are from you someone. sure that's okay? A lot of you might say that's not stealing yeah, since they left them, but what they came back, back for them. them. Who knows? Maybe he left them here on purpose. Oh, okay, yeah, I got them here with me. You know, just in case the customer came looking for them. Yeah, <laughs> not because I like to play the game or anything. <laughs> Please. I think it goes right, both ways so in that situation. Cards. That's everything we need, right? Yeah. Yep. So, are you ready to start? I'm ready. All right, then let's begin. All right, you then. Ooh, oh, I love the kitten. Character cards and uh, and attack ties. Oh, kitten paw. That's adorable. Search your first character. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the world of Genius Invocation TCG. Yo, what's up? Simply put, this is a game where you control character cards to duke it out with your opponent. Pew pew pew. Once you've defeated all of your opponent's character cards, victory shall be yours. Interesting. Now then, you're gonna need a character on the field to start with. Alrighty then. I guess I'm gonna use D-Lo, confirm your selection. Let's finish this swiftly. Attack for us. Nice. Roll phase. First, we roll eight elemental dice at the start of every round. Alright. These dice correspond to elemental energy. We'll be spending these dice to perform actions. So I got an Electro, Hydro, four Pyros, and then two, I don't know what they are. Confirm. Action phase, your turn. Once the roll phase is over, you'll enter the action phase, where the real game starts. 
All right. During the action phase, you can spend elemental dice to perform various actions. Interesting. Of course, the most common action is to use character skills. Oh. Oh, you mean elemental skill. Not bad. You just made your first attack. Now that I think of it, is it on uh, Bennett's skill and on Delu's skill? They are like the same thing. They just swing in different uh, directions. Like they both just sw s flare around fire on their weapon. During the act attack. Meh. Too. And as you can see, once the enemy finishes their move, it's our turn again. All right, so then. Elemental skill. Regardless of the elemental type. I assume that. So we're gonna use them to pay for the pyro dice needed for this skill. Go on, give it a try. <laughs> that was pretty good. That's one opponent down for the count. Bam! Noise. But the game has only just begun. Remember? You have to defeat all opponents to win. True. Ouch. Hmm. As much as we'd like to attack again, seems like we've run out of usable dice. What? Huh. In that case, let's end this round. After you end round, you won't be able to do anything else this round. And once everyone chooses end round, we can move on to the next round. Okay. You attack first. All so round right. two. Here we are, a fresh new round. <laughs> <laughs> so basically every round consists of one dice roll and when you can't use any any more attacks via um, what your dice uh, lets you do then you have to do an end of round and then you get to roll dice again and a fresh new round means time to roll the dice again that's how we're gonna get the elemental energy we need after all all right I wonder is this uh, is the elemental energy uh, used Ew, here that's some terrible I know. Well, there's no way we'll be able to use Diluc's skill now. How? We have a pyro dice, though. We have pyro one. We got three geos, two electros, a hydro, and a dendro. I I kind of wonder if the element elements being used are actually being used. Like the dice are allowing you to use elements. So, uh, uh, people who don't have visions know what it's sort of like to use vi on elements. Or if it's literally just special effects from the game and people in the game don't actually see those uh, elements. But don't worry. Situations like these are why we have the option to re-roll. <laughs> Let me guess, but you can only re-roll once. Once per round, you can select all the dice that you don't like and re-roll them. Yeah, I just... Yeah, I can actually do a lay more better on most of them. <gasps> Ooh, we got three pyros and two on uh, two when Omni the elements. Phase begins, the player who first chose end round and we the got three hydros, hot damn. Takes their turn first. That sort of doesn't make sense though. This means that since you finished first the last round, you'll be the first to start this round. Alrighty then. Let's learn a little bit about energy and elemental burst. But it does give you a tactical advantage if you kind of go first in the previous round, but you got first in the, in the, in the last round, so then you can go first in, this, in the next round. Each time you use a skill, your character will gain one energy. Yeah, I see. But we're still one short. Never mind. Let's start with a normal attack instead. 
Dilug's normal attack only needs one pyro die and two other dice of any type. Okay. In any case, your normal attack needs fewer pyro dice than your elemental skill. All right. So I get to do more damage with a skill, though. Ow. <laughs> now we have three energy plus. We have enough pyro elemental dice left over. It's time to use your powerful elemental burst. All right, you then. Let's go. Deals a damage. Ooh. Time for retribution. This is so much of Magic the Gallery Arena, though. Ooh, to the next battle. Oh, tiny get then. I guess we're using Kai this time. In an actual game of Genius Invocation TCG, you need to use multiple character cards to form a party. I know. Next up, it's time for your second character card. Kaya to take the stage. I wonder, do, uh, does uh, Elemental Lingering exist so th in this game so that like you can do Elemental Reactions? And you have to do a dice roll in, in order to see how good Seems the reaction like any is. Seems like Kaya is going to cost quite a lot of Cryo Dice. At least I got like on um, three more on two more cryos. So I got well actually I got an omni element, so I got so in that way I can say I got four cryos. When you deal cryo damage, you'll cause your target to be affected by cryo. Yeah, you would think so. Oh, so there is elemental lingering. Now our opponent is affected by cryo. This is a good time to learn about elemental reactions. Different types of elemental damage affect enemies with different elements. When a character is affected by certain elemental combos, an elemental reaction will be triggered. Yeah, At I know. the moment, your opponent is affected by cryo, so we should try and use a pyro skill on them. Looks like we have to switch active characters, though. Oh, that reminds me. Both sides must have one active character, while others are considered standby characters. Really? Normally, we can only use the active character skills. Now, if we want to use the skills of our standby character, we'll have to switch them to the active character. In this case, we'll have to switch to D Luke. You know yeah, I get your bias. You can spend one elemental die of any kind to switch a standby character to the active character. So, in case you have an element you don't have, you don't have on the on the table, uh, you don't have a character that uses an element uh, from the dice. So you can use the element you're not going to use in order to switch out a character. Let's Seems finish fair. This swiftly. Switching characters is an action just like using a skill. So once it's done. It's your opponent's hey, turn. Oh, oh, so but they attack the active Your character. Can only target the active character. As you can see, your opponent just attacked D Luke. All right, then. Now that D Luke is our active character, it's time I'm to use his right skill. We'll later. Maybe. Because the opponent is already affected by Cryo, dealing pyro damage triggers the melt elemental reaction. Yeah, when I know. Triggered, Meld increases damage dealt by two. Noise. This will allow you to deal loads of damage in one go. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. The next battle. Tiny kitten. 
What? All right. <laughs> Next up, let's learn how to use card types other than character cards. Yeah, weapon on um, These types. cards are all known as action cards. Not weapon? Each time a match starts, you have to draw five action cards to form your starting hand. Why did we get Paimon, though? She's not a fucking weapon. Roll face. All right, to then. Uh-oh. Looks like uh, we don't have any elemental dice we can spend to make an attack. Yeah. It's still no luck. I can't do anything. Seriously? We still don't have any usable dice even after that reroll? Yeah. Well, huh, never mind. Even in cases like this, we can still attack. We just need to put the action cards in our hand to good use. Really? Don't underestimate action cards. They can grant all kinds of support and buffs to your active character. Take this one, for example. So playing this action card will require two of these. Uh, see the symbol? Yeah, that means you'll need to play elemental dice of the same type. Some other cards will cost you these instead. The cost requirements for these are much more lenient. You can spend any kind of elemental dice. We'll cross that bridge when we get there, though. For now, just play this action card. So it's good to, it's good to know that we can still uh, attack, even though we have no elements. Um, I'll attack with... Oh, I guess you're forcing me to use Geo. So, playing an action card from your hand is a form of fast action. Fast actions do not end your current turn. All right. Simply put, you can continue to act even after playing an action card. Well then, <laughs> you have your blade. Time to test it out. But wait, Deluxe Elemental Skill costs three pyro dice, and right now, we don't even have one. All right. Not a problem. This is where we can use a more advanced mechanic known as elemental tuning. Okay. By discarding one card from your hand, hey, you can convert one elemental hey, die hey, into the element of your current you know. active character. Huh? And this card isn't useful right now. You so he might as well use it for elemental down. tuning. You know, like doing I'm on to tuning. Sometimes you won't be able to perform any actions you want to because you didn't roll the elemental dice you wanted. Oh well. True. Oop, ingenious invocation TCG. Keeping up a constant flow of combat is much more important than the number of cards you have. In all this right. case, well, <laughs> let's just take all these useless cards and use them for elemental tuning. Just like playing cards from your hand. Elemental tuning is a fast action. Come on, hurry up! Okay. Well, 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 would you look at that? Finally, we now have enough ele- Hmm. Because you have the White Iron Greatsword equipped, Searing Onslaught will deal one extra damage! Nice. Danny get in. Now comes the final part. Oh yeah. In a real match, you can make adjustments to your initial hand. Is that Alice? At this time, we can select any number of cards in our hand to shuffle back into the draw pile, and then draw the same number of new cards. What? Nice. Oh, I guess we don't want a certain card. Once we can just put in. Any That's just going to redraw. Starting hand. Both players have to select their starting active character at the same time. Oh boy. This one's a real doozy. We gotta take it out pronto. 
Let's see how you do this time. Remember, start by selecting your initial starting character. Kaya. This will be interesting. Roll face. Hey, we got three cryos. Hey, look at you! You sure are getting the hang of these rolls. Now let me teach you one last trick. Free of charge. Okay. You can preview your opponent's actions. I mean, that is to say, you can read their intent. Really? Check up on his intent. Check it out. So here's where you can see all your opponent's intentions for this round. Okay. All your opponent's intended actions for the round will be listed here in order. There has to be a drawback to this. Reference this to come up with effective countermeasures and easily defeat your opponents. Yeah, but there has to be a drawback to this. Well then, that's the end of the tutorial. You're on your own from here. May victory be yours. All right. Um, let me give you, no. Why, what? Oh, you can only have that. Man, motherfucker. To the same element. Fine, I'll use the Animo. So I got to use that. Yeah, I know, three cryos. Cool it. Ouch. Let's go. Oh, you fool. You, you magnetic. Oh. Oh, wait. I see. I see what to do. Convert. 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 Wait. Oh. 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 Let, let's end around. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> There's one more thing I almost forgot. What? Every time you hit an end phase, you get to draw two cards from your action cards pile. Nice. Remember, you have to make use of both your elemental dice and your action cards to win. True. I wonder how long elemental react elemental lingering actually goes uh, go on for. Um, let's reroll the no, no. Let's reroll these four. Okay, better. At least I have a pyro and three on um, cryos, so I can activate multiple cryos. Ow! Fuck you. Okay, good. What? Oh, right. Damn it. Why did I think of that? Okay, so. Oh, never mind. I already have that selected then. Damn, I should have thought about that. I should have just used Cryo instead. Converts. Converts. And then let's convert this as well. That should allow us to do all that and bam. BAM! And now it's all in for TCG. What does TCG even stand for though? 
Unless it means tactical card game, then I understand. Jesus of the Kitchen TCG is a slightly paced, hard stop, stopping tabletop on a card you utilize your, your deck by constructing them around character and action cards uh, and go to and go toe to toe with various opponents at a table. Uh, you will uh, roll eight, element, eight elemental dice at the start of each round. After throwing on these dice, uh, you will have one chance to choose any number of elemental dice and re-roll them. Each elemental die is eight-sided and, and can roll any one of following eight elemental attributes. Cryo, Hydro, Pyro, Electro, Animal, Geo, and Dangel. And as well as the Omni element, which can be regarded and, be and used as any basic element. Various types of actions require element elemental dice as payment. During your uh, during your action on phase, he may spend elemental dice uh, to use the skills of your active character, which is a way of attacking on uh, your opponent. Active characters defeat all of your opponents. Active, act all your opponents' characters to win the duels. On uh, during the during your action phase, uh, you can s spend one elemental die of any type to switch your active character. During your active phase, you can spend elemental dice to play action cards. Of these. Uh, these equipment on um, cards can be used on to strengthen specific characters. Well, support cards can be used to co to continuously provide buffs. Event cards will Im Im immediately take a one-time effect when played. During your action phase, you can discard cards to charge the elemental type of your elemental dice. Each card discarded will allow you to charge the elemental type of one elemental die to that of your current active character. Once you have completed your, your actions in this round, you can declare the round's end. The player who declares on this who declares this first will play first next round. Once on both sides have made on uh, this declaration, this round is over. Both uh, players will draw two cards and begin a new round. All right, cool. Those are the basics. Did you get all that? What we just played was an adventure challenge. Does it's a basic to as if there's advanced settings. Genius Invocation TCG can be played in dual mode, where each player brings three character cards, or in adventure challenge mode, with a fixed deck for each challenge. But the rules are all the same. As long as you understand the basics, then you should be able to take on any of those rowdy booze hounds. Alrighty then. Although I feel there are still many details to grasp. I think I understand the basic premise of the game now. That was quite the detailed explanation. Was that to you, Luke? I didn't know the Cat's Tales famous mixologist had such an eclectic skill set. What? What? Oh, when did you get here? I stepped in while you were in the middle of your explanation. I hope I didn't dampen the mood. I think to be honest, I don't know why Diana hates D. Luke unless she never got to, you know, get to know him. Because, like, D-Look is like Dion. They both don't like wine. Except for the fact that D-Look has to sell it in order to have a living. While Diona, in order to, uh, literally just wants to destroy the uh, industry. Though she has a uh, very special skill given to her by a fairy. Uh, wow, well, well, oh, when did you get here? No, no, not at all. You snuck in without making a sound! I mean, that's not surprising. <laughs> anyway... What are you doing here? The Cat's Tale is a player in Mondstadt's alcohol industry. Naturally, you have some collaboration with my winery. I'm here today to discuss a few items of business with Margaret. Hmm, too bad she just left. But if you head off right now, you might still catch up with her. Never mind, it's nothing urgent. In fact, I think I'm now more interested in this card that you're using to teach them the game. Wait! This card? Ha 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 ha! It's D Luke's character card! True. 
Although I have some degree of experience with Genius Invocation TCG, seeing this particular card is a first for me. Uh, How? A customer left it behind a few days ago, but he wasn't even playing the game while he was here. Oh? And what sort of a customer was he? Uh, he wasn't wearing an eye patch, okay? He had a light complexion and a super serious look on his face. He wasn't much of a talker and looked like he was just drinking his worries away. He never seen him around here before. Hmm. Wait, are you saying that it was I Kaya? Catch, you say? There's no doubt about it. Gah. I was trying to give the opposite description, but I just ended up giving it away. Sorry, guard captain. Don't you should just go so on no, without uh, doing opposite description. Or else people will be suspicious. So, what about the dealer's character card? I don't mind. It's just a card with my image on it. True. I didn't expect Dilo to be familiar with Genius Invocation TCG. The game has been catching on lately. It's hard to go anywhere without hearing it mentioned. Every now and then, I'll sit down and play a game with the customers in Angel's Share. Really? You offer a game now? I was hoping we could play a game, but this issue of someone leaving a character card with my image of the cat's tail is very intriguing. <laughs> it's getting late, and someone has some explaining to do. We'll have to have that duel another time. Sure, I look forward to it. Good. Then I'll take my leave. You know where the door is. Don't let the door hit you where Lord Barbado split you. Uh-oh. Guard captain. Oh. I hope Kaya will be alright. Oh, yeah. Well... Now that we are familiar with the rules, why don't we try playing a game of Genius Invocation TCG? Ooh, two new players having their first ever duel! <laughs> this sounds like fun! But, I guess. in order to play an official duel, you need to have three character cards. Remember, a complete deck has to have three character cards and 30 action cards. Don't we have that sucrose card? Then, let's use my cards. These were mixed in with all the others I had received. And I didn't know what they were for at first. But now that we've learned the rules, I can see that this one must be the Sucrose character card. I guess so. Now, it looks like we each have the Kaya, Diluc, and Sucrose character cards. So why don't we have our first duel? If you say so. All right, let's duel. All right, then let's do this. Shall Rosaria? Who are these two? Are they the? It looks like they're the ones that the artifact sets are uh, about. Unlike the Denjo the and the Verdessa one. Previously, duels are true tests of strength between two players. Yeah, I know. In a duel, your opponent can also use action cards, and they'll also be able to grab new cards during an end phase. Yeah, I know. At the same time, your opponent must also spend elemental dice to take actions, so you'll be unable to view their intent. Oh, so I'm only able to um, review their intent on, like, at, at their second attack uh, during every uh, phase. <laughs> Are you ready? No it's wonder why that. So there was a, a little bit of a nerf. No much of a nerf, but okay. Um, I'm gonna use sucrose. I want to help. Well, you're also gonna use sucrose, bruh. Ooh, this is amazing. All right, um. Oh, 
I guess, play card. What did that do, though? Yeah, but that's the spirit. I can't use it on her since it's a catalyst. So I can only do... I'm going after Kaya. Yeah. Yeah. Can I not attack Kaya? Absorption test. I guess I can't attack. So that does confirm I cannot attack someone that isn't a playable character on the field. I see. Oh, but I'm gonna have to end this round. Oh, I got Callus. That's good. I guess that's. Oh God, no, that's bad. Um, I need to reroll these Dendro and Electros. Okay, I see I can only use Kaya. Ready when you are. Huh. Okay. Dodge this. Ha. Huh. I don't really have I need to go back to Sucros. I I can do it. So Thrill can hit everyone. Even more reason why to love Animo. Oh, damn it. I guess I might have to end off this turn. Ah. Uh, wait, I forgot to give the callus then. Oh, but I need more Animo though. So I'm gonna get rid of these. Give me more animal. Fuck! This is not good. Play card. All right. Animal. 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 I should have enough. So burst. Enhanced animal module 75. Oh, I should have made sure I had lingering on though. Let's switch over to him. Switch. Let's finish this swiftly. All right. Damn it. And round. Hope the burst doesn't go away. Oh, it does. Ev oh, it does damage every three rounds. Okay, I see. That's cool. That's really nice to know. So I think that might be for all animal characters. Let's get a hydro. Let's get rid of hydro. 
and Electro. You know, okay, that's good. Cool it. Ow, bitch. All right, uh, so l let's do this. And let's attack. Yep. And bam, we took out Kaya. Darn. I didn't factor that into the equation. How? I'm gonna have to convert some elements into pyro. And there we go. Oh wait, wait, wait. So doing a swirl, so doing a swirl element would give them all that element. Then I can switch to another character in order to do a, another reaction. So being able to do two different types of reactions. That's so cool. Like I'm about to end off the turn. Oh, we took down on, we took out Superdose. We healed. I guess it's because of that cathedral thing oh, I put down. I wasn't expecting that. What were you expecting? Oh, we have more than enough pyro, but just in case, let's re-roll re those two. Oh, very good. I got lots of ammo. Were you trying to? Oh, well, that was a massive delay. Here we go. Now I literally have to switch over to uh, Sucros. I want to help. All I can do is uh, do skills. Ooh, damn! There we go. I, I took down Sucrose. I can't believe I lost when we had the exact same character cards. I just more smarter, must be to be more honest. complicated than I first thought. Every decision is a difficult trade-off in this game. If there was only a way to transplant the arms of the two standby characters onto the active character's body. That's not how the rules work, Sucrose. Don't be a sore loser. That kind of thing is looked down on in TCG circles. Oh, I am sorry. I was beaten fair and square. I know that. I just can't stand losing. Ha! Huh. But it was a fun match. You went easy on me. Paimon didn't know you could get so competitive, Sucrose. It's adorable. I always get a little upset when I lose. It's like that with my research, too. It always gets to me when my experiments don't go as planned. Especially when there's an alchemy genius like Albedo around to compare myself to. Uh, you lost me at alchemy and experiments. But I'm pretty sure it's normal to feel that way. Playing cards is no different. Each game you lose makes you want to win the next one to settle the score. And the desire to win pushes you to improve your strategy and build a better deck. Hell yeah. <laughs> Seizing victory through a winning combination of luck, skill, and experience is where all the fun of genius and vocation lies. But what if you keep trying and trying and never win a single game? A losing streak, uh, yeah. That'll definitely get you down. But it's way better to keep trying until you win than to just accept you're a plain old loser and give up. Yeah. Hmm. You make a good point, Diona. Besides, Sucrose, you're already making great progress. It'd take at least eight of our regular booze hounds to match your level. <laughs> well, this last match. 
Agreed, it was brilliant. Thank you. I'm just a little disappointed to lose, that's all. But Genius and Vacation TCG is a really fun game. Hell yeah. Good. Having fun is the main thing. If you ever want to play again in the future, feel free to come by the Cat's Tail. Uh, but don't expect me to play with you. I just mean, this place probably has the right atmosphere. I'll definitely be back. All right. I think you should have all the basics down by now. I need to get back to bartending. Sheehan's likely been busy making his tavern more popular with his delicious cocktails. Pui, pui, pui. And we can't have that. Huh. Burning Mondstadt's wine industry to the ground keeps me pretty busy, you know. So if you need any more help, go bother Sheehan. All right. Well, that is all for a genius invocation TCG. This might as well have been put into parts than into one uh, episode because of how long that was. So, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notifications. And I shall see you later in the Elements of Nation and the Genshin Pack Adventure. And Ad Astra. Avisosk. Ah!